Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 71 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. We've got a ton of info for you today, so let's dig in. Friday morning, the work platform was raised to the underside of the launch mount for the first time since before the launch as the foundation work has now progressed far enough to allow the platform to be driven underneath again. That afternoon, the first prefabricated corner of the fourth level of the new mega bay was lifted and installed on the section below as construction of the new building continues at a steady pace. That evening, the first of the three manifolds that feed the water-cooled steel plates were lifted and installed between the legs of the orbital launch mount. Less than six hours later, the second of the manifolds followed the first as it was also installed under the launch mount where they will be welded to the large centerpiece that was previously placed. And finally, around 3.30 Saturday morning, the final manifold was also lifted and installed, leaving just the final three plates that will go between the other legs to complete the installation of the steel sandwich. Later Saturday morning, over at the build site, work continues on the first phase of the Star Factory expansion with the lift and installation of another section of roof trusses. That night, the second corner of the fourth level of the new mega bay was transported over from the assembly area at the Sanchez site. Around that same time, the large prefabricated Y-shaped pipe that will split the water between two of the manifolds was lifted and installed near the orbital launch mount. On Sunday, installation of the pipework that will feed water to the steel sandwich continued with another large pipe being fitted into place. Later that afternoon, Rovercam spotted crews installing a construction elevator on the outside of the new mega bay. That evening, the chopsticks were lowered back to the base of the launch tower and the ship quick disconnect arm rotated back after they had previously been moved to allow room for the LR-11000 to install the steel plate sections. Monday morning, crews were removing some of the concrete at the main launch entrance, likely as they work once again towards installing a gate across the entrance. At the build site, a load of stair risers arrived, which are for the stair sections being assembled ahead of installation in the new mega bay. Later that morning, another large diameter pipe was lifted and installed as part of the supply lines for the water-cooled steel plate system under the mount. A short time later, a new assembly was lifted and installed on the ship QD arm. This looks like it could be an extra support for the QD assembly when it is extended to connect to a starship. While the new mega bay continues to grow taller, down closer to the ground, crews work to install cladding on the first level of the building. Once its work on the QD arm was completed for the day, the LR-11000 was moved across the launch site to Ship 25 on Test Stand B. Once at Pad B, the crane picked up the ship lifting squid and was connected to Ship 25 to allow the tanks to be depressurized for worker access. Later that same night, a new relatively small vertical tank was lifted and installed next to the horizontal water tanks that will feed the water-cooled steel plate system. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, the first of Booster 12's grid fins was moved into Mega Bay for installation at the top of the vehicle's stacked methane tank section. Around dawn, a concrete pump truck began work on the former landing pad, pouring part of the new foundation on top of the piles that were placed here in recent weeks. At the build site, the second prefabricated section of the fourth level of the new mega bay was lifted and installed on the remaining back corner of that level. Mid-morning, the removed engine shielding from Ship 25 was spotted leaving the launch site. It is likely that the ship will get more robust shielding to accommodate hot staging. Early in the evening, the concrete pump truck was packed up and sent on its way following a long day of over 11 hours pouring concrete around the launch site. At the build site, Ship 24.2, a new test article was rolled out of High Bay. This will likely end up in the former nose cone jail at Massey's and will be tested to verify structural integrity of the current payload bay design. On Wednesday evening, SpaceX cleared the launch site and performed a powerful purge of the high-pressure gas system for the water-cooled steel plates, possibly not only as a test, but also to help clean out some of the newly installed gas lines. 
Back at the build site, the only remaining completed and unused booster transport stand was rolled out of the fabrication area at Sanchez and taken to the SPMT yard next to the payload processing building. At the same time, the next prefabricated corner section for the new mega bay was also rolled out of the Sanchez site on its way to the staging area near the new building. On Thursday morning, the new ship 24.2 test tank was moved back into high bay as crews continued to work to prepare this new prototype for its upcoming test campaign. That evening, SpaceX performed a full speed retraction test with a booster quick disconnect. This is the first such test since the Flix pipes were replaced following the launch in April. Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography flew through the Texas skies on the 14th and brought us another round of amazing shots of Starbase. At the Sanchez site, we can see that the reassembly of the ground fabrication building is well underway. On the other side of the gate, we can see work preparing a new vertical tank similar to the one installed earlier in the week for the water-cooled steel plate system. Nearby, some kind of new construction is also underway. Could this be a new type of transport stand or maybe part of a new test stand? Let us know your thoughts below. At the Mega Bay prefabrication area, work on the final section of the fourth level appears to be almost complete and the first corner of the fifth and presumed final level is now underway. Over near the Rocket Garden, a new square concrete pad has been placed, but as there are no embeds yet, it is not yet clear what purpose it will serve. Across Meteos Avenue, crews continue to make steady progress on the new Mega Bay. The fourth level is now almost three quarters complete. As previously mentioned, a new elevator was added to the side of the building to allow easier access during construction. Next to the building, we can see that crews have already prefabricated six sections of the stairs while the seventh is now being worked on. Once complete, these stairs should be installed in the front corners of the building while elevators should go in the back. The first phase of the Star Factory expansion continues at a rapid pace with most of the structural steel now in place and the first section of roofing installed. The first section of the concrete slab for the next phase has already been placed and excavations for the foundations as well as the installation of underground conduit are already underway at the Highway 4 end of the building. Switching over to Florida, on Sunday morning, fairing recovery vessel Doug towed a shortfall of Gravitas out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-5 launch. Just before midnight, Falcon 9 booster 1058 took to the Florida skies for a record-setting 16th flight as it lifted 22 more Starlink V2 minis to orbit. Just after midnight on Wednesday morning, Bob returned to Port Canaveral carrying both of fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-5 launch just over 48 hours earlier. By that evening, Tug Crosby Skipper returned to Port Canaveral would just read the instructions and the new Falcon 9 fleet leading booster 1058 following that same Starlink launch. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.